Well, this morning, tensions growing for U.S. forces in the Middle East. The number of American bases targeted by Iran proxies now rising to 106 since October. The latest attacks coming as the Navy shoots down anti ship ballistic missiles launched by the Houthis in the Red Sea. The first time the Navy has ever done this in battle. Ben M. Ben Talablu is a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, where he focuses on Iran. He joins us now. Ben M., I want you 106 attacks now. We've got three injured service members, one critically. No update yet on, on that individual. Does, and Iran is running this, do they fear the U.S. at this point? Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. I think you put your finger right on the problem. Not only doesn't the patron, the Islamic Republic of Iran, not fear the U.S. at the moment, but the proxies, weaker, smaller forces, be they located in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Gaza, and even Yemen, as you saw with the intercepted anti-ship ballistic missile attacks, uh, they believe that America is a waning force presence in the Middle East. They believe that America will do anything uh, not to have to resort to the use of military force. And if you look at the response ratio, what, about under 10 to about over 100 uh, in Iraq and Syria alone, the numbers speak for themselves. So when do we get to the point that the administration recognizes the deterrence currently is not working and we need to do something differently? And what does that different thing look like? You know, with respect, the answer should have been long, long ago. The, it also depends a great deal on the uh, geography. In Iraq and Syria, even before us getting struck, the U.S. needs to more actively take out the installations that actually house uh, many of these weapons, including the short-range ballistic missiles and land attack cruise missiles, but also the suicide drones. When the U.S. and coalition forces are actually struck there, they need to respond to the place that the point of origin is for these attacks. Sometimes you'll see the U.S. absorbing strikes more in Iraq and responding only in Syria. That's a problem. We need to even out that response ratio. Third, the U.S. needs to aggressively go after with a campaign of sanctions and designation of these organizations, as well as these organizations themselves. And lastly, if you look further south, the Houthis in Yemen, the U.S. really does need to beef up that force presence there that it has an international maritime security construct in the Red Sea. Uh, but so far, that construct is only uh, denying these weapons. It's intercepting these weapons. It's not responding kinetically or militarily to the point of their launch. And so long as this is the case where we just deny rather than punish, you can expect more attacks. That's a great point, Benham. Should the administration immediately be redesignating the Houthis as a terrorist organization? Remember when President Biden came into office just a month after taking the oath, he uh, undesignated them. And this is critical. You know, it wouldn't solve the problem of anti-ship missiles being fired at us, but it is the right start. It's the right policy framing. Look, the Houthis, you can tell by their slogan, uh, they're aligned with the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran, which is the world's foremost state sponsor of terrorism. But also the Houthis have liaised with two designated foreign terrorist organizations. They've used child soldiers. They've sieged uh, civilian cities. They've fired on, uh, on civilian population centers in the UAE and in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they've intercepted uh, the free flow of traffic in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've even targeted religious minorities. Uh, if this doesn't meet, as well as, of course, using terrorist tactics, if this yeah. doesn't meet the definition of a terrorist, I don't yeah. know what does. Hey, Ben, I only have about 20 seconds left, but I just want to ask you, do you have any insight into reports that Iran is escalating its nuclear program. You know, in November, there was the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency Board of Governors. The Secretary General was, uh, you know, pointing to exactly this kind of stuff, the growth in Iran's stockpile. Now we have the growth not just in the stockpile, but the pace of enrichment. This is something the Islamic Republic is growing while the world is only looking at the terror threat. We have to walk and chew gum at the same time, focus on rolling back those terror networks and more aggressively enforce those sanctions to roll back their nuclear program as well. Ben M. Ben Talablu, thank you for your insight. Have a good day. Pleasure.